A podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. That's right, everybody. It's episode 299 of the Angry Chicken. My name is Willie Dills and uh, joined by no Garrett, but luckily the most important person of this podcast is here. That is Jocelyn Moffat. What's up? <laughs> Hi, friends. <laughs> this is how, yeah, this is how uh, we're going to we're going to introduce you every time. The most important person in the room. I love it. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so Garrett is uh, feeling a little under the weather, but uh, that's fine because as long as he makes it to episode 300, we're good, right? This is only exactly. 299. This is some stupid yeah, this non-round does not number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing to talk about. Nothing really going on. We're just kind of here hanging out. Uh, so, by the way, that next episode is episode 300, and we should tell everybody uh, who's listening or watching that we're going to be doing a show on Thursday. So this Thursday, like yeah, yeah two like days in two days. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to do it. Uh, so 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. My time, Central Time. Uh, so anybody who wants to catch that show live, come on by. That will be back on twitch.tv slash a move if you want to catch the show live. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what we're doing, but we're just moving it forward for scheduling reasons and should be a lot of fun. It's going to be it's going to be just another episode, really, if you think about it. <laughs> but there's multiple zeros. Yeah, that's, that's true. Important for a three some reason. And two zeros. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. Right. <laughs> It is true, though, that a lot of podcasts don't make it to 300 episodes, really. I mean, a lot of podcasts don't make it to, like, five episodes, to be honest. There's a ton of people who just try to get things off the ground and it never works. So we're, we should be pretty proud of ourselves, I guess, you know? Oh, definitely. And I I really can't believe that we've been doing it for this long. Yeah. You know, like, six, six years seems I know. insane. insane. Especially so. covering this dead game. I don't think it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw it in there a little bit. Uh, what's going on with you and Hearthstone? Are you uh, playing any fun, cool decks that aren't our strategy deck? Well, I did try a lot of the strategy deck, and okay. I fell flat on my face. So mm. I'm looking forward to you telling me all the ways I can play this deck <sighs> without falling flat on my face. <laughs> it's a falling on your face kind of deck, to be honest. It's, <laughs> we mentioned, we mentioned <clears throat> apparently I just went through puberty. We mentioned <laughs> um, last week that it was not necessarily a top, a tippy top tier, like, rank up fast deck it's more of a yep. it's more of a have a good time kind of thing <laughs> yeah i've actually i've been playing some even paladin but i keep like trying these new decks because i think they're going to be super cool and i really want to play with them but then i'm like but paladin i already have my wins i should be trying like my warlock so oh, close you're still my stuck in so that close. thing I'm, oh i man. am i'm still stuck in that mentality yeah. i am yeah but you just got to get all I'm, the golden classes close. and you'll never think I'm getting about it again. really close yeah, yeah i'm getting really close on the golden classes i actually so. noticed the other day i've got about about five classes or so that are over a thousand wins now i was like holy wow. crap when did this happen yeah, yeah even like, my my hunter and paladin are closing in on like six or seven hundred each i think but mm -hmm. i'm just like i guess i keep trying to play them with them being like no bad jocelyn i mean no hunter no paladin you should just be playing hunter let's be real <laughs> i know and that's like that's kind of the hard part is like hunter is so good right now and there's so many different ways to play hunter you're not even locked into any one kind of archetype you can be more aggressive or you can be more control dude i can... played straight up recruit big hunter the other day in my dhl match with no undasta and just crushed wow. <laughs> it's just good yeah the class so is, the class I, good. I think yeah you should just be playing hunter right now yeah. but our advice to all of you out there <laughs> yeah. be playing hunter i have been messing around though with uh well obviously the the shaman that we're going to talk about later and then um i was still playing a lot of the mechath warlock because i do find mechath warlock really fun and mm -hmm. i am pushing for that last um I think I have about 50 wins left to go on Warlock, so... So that'll I'm take just... about five years playing Megathune Warlock. Yeah, I know, but it's still super fun. Like, when it, it happens, is. when it goes off, I'm just like, oh, this is so satisfying. It's literally the most satisfying combo in the game when your opponent just explodes. It's yeah, great. and you feel pretty <clears throat> You feel pretty accomplished when you do it, too. You do. Because you, do. you feel like you, like you did it. You won. Yeah. I had to play all my cards. I did exactly. not die. I did not overdraw. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it's a fun deck. It, and the version that we talked about last week, was it last week? Yeah, it was last week, right? Yes. Yeah. That is just like super cool. Cause at first it was just, 
it was almost like you were playing demon cube things and then at the end you were mecha thuning them and yeah. now it's more like no no this is really tr i'm setting up these crazy defiles and stuff it's mm -hmm. it's pretty sweet so i've been trying to get to legend and wild this month and um <laughs> it's proving literally to be the hardest wild well, month ever <laughs> for a good reason i mean it's yeah i'm trying to do the same thing everyone else is doing right um but it is proving to be a tough nut to crack um and that's probably why, honestly, it probably would have been easier last month. Probably would have mm -hmm. been easier two months ago. It'll be easier next month. Uh, but basically, I've gotten to rank one several times, and I keep getting knocked back down. I was playing... Uh, that's my standard life. Sure. That's why I gave up and just played fun things. Because <laughs> I can't yeah. get past that hump. <laughs> well, I was playing Odd Rogue for a while, and then I just kept going up against Even Shaman, which everyone considers one of the best decks, but is... Currently, according to Tempo Storm rank or the tier two list, mm. but then I switched to Even Shaman and it was doing pretty well. And then I guess I just got kind of bored of it, so then I switched <laughs> to a Q block because I was just getting. I I, it, I think this is the problem that I'm having is I should just be playing these like tempo decks mm. that just put lots of stats into play really quickly, but I just get bored doing that for so long. So I'm just like, I want to do something weird and tricky. I'm going to play Q block in wild and then I just get stomped on. But uh, so it sounds I don't like know. you just have to make a make a decision and stick to it of what you want to do. Like, do you really yeah. want to go for that top 100 or do you want to have fun? <laughs> yeah, I guess I just want to get legend and then be done. <laughs> I think once I get legend, I'm just going to be like, OK, cool. So then just stick with it for sure. even Shaman or whatever tempo -y thing you do. Yeah, just got to win like I'm at to legend and then then have sure. fun. I'm at I'm at rank two right now, and I only need to get I need to have like one good night where I go, you know, twenty and eleven, right? And then I'll be there. That doesn't there seem go. that hard. Just do yeah. it. <laughs> How hard could it possibly be? No, not hard at all. <laughs> I you know the one thing is I will say this I didn't I started late. I should have I should have made this decision about this being my goal on the first <laughs> rather mm. than on the 17th or whatever when i decided okay let's go yeah, for that's it. quite a handicap dude yeah because <laughs> I've, I've actually only played about 95 or 100 games or something and i started at rank nine but i got rank five last season in wild so yeah uh but we should probably just talk about the news because i could talk about how that will be easier to do <laughs> pretty soon oh uh, let me find that bumper oh wait hold on we have one more minor announcement before news uh, taco signups are going live for all patrons, not just the fancy pants $2 patrons. <laughs> uh, are we going to post that, what, after the show today? Uh, tomorrow. 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 Okay. Tomorrow. Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Wednesday the, the 30th. 30th. All right. There you go. So everybody who's not signed up currently, who is a patron, be aware you will see a post in Patreon, and then you will get the, uh, you will get the link. There's no password or anything, just the link. You go in. You're going to have to put your decks in, I think, and you have to do some other stuff, but you'll figure it I out. You're smart yeah, people. I think you have to put your classes, but I think you can edit them up until the day. Oh, so the, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what I put if it you in. You don't know 100% yeah. what you're going to play. That's okay. You just yeah. have to uh, input any four classes, and then you can go and back you and can change alter. Them later. Yeah. I think I have it set to like turn off the day before as like the deadline yeah. or something. So, anyway, you'll figure it out. You're smart people. I trust you. All right. <laughs> let's talk about some news. Good news, everyone. Oh, no. By the way, if you're not a patron and you're like, what the hell are they talking about? It's patreon.com slash TAC is how to do that if you want to play in, Nailed it. in the the uh, what, the rumble in the taco. Uh, all right. <laughs> there is some news. There is some news. And it's not, I don't know, it's not the news I was expecting or earth-shattering amazing stuff but hey it's easier to rank up now that's cool uh, i was so <laughs> super excited when i saw ranked play update i was like oh my god what I are know, they doing right? now this is gonna be so good maybe we're gonna get bans and then they're like there's less stars and i was like yeah. oh for yeah. everyone except like <laughs> i pretty much play i go from rank 10 to rank 5 every season i get my dad legend and then i go back down and then that's like that's my play space. So I was like, oh, literally nothing changes for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's essentially. OK, so it was a few months back when they made the 
additional rank 50. Yeah, and then, I feel like that was like in the summer. Yeah, and then a few months before that, when they made the uh, go back four ranks at the end of the season. Yeah. And all ranks have five stars. So basically what they did is they just reverted that whole all ranks have five stars thing, but they've kept the go back four at the end of the season. And now basically from rank 50 to 16, all ranks love only three stars. Wow. If you win streak through those, that's just you're going to fly right through. And then from 15 they, to 11. They kept, they kept all the rewards though, right? From rank 50 to 25. So all the yes. rewards new players were getting. So it just is going to take you less time now to go mm -hmm. from 50 to 25 as a new player, but all the rewards are the same. Which is And awesome. from 50 to 20, you can't lose stars. So mm -hmm. yeah, you only need to get those three wins to get through. Um, so that means, yeah, it's going to happen much faster. Now you're just going to, you're just going to get there. I mean, that's 40% less wins total. That's a lot yeah. of, of wins to take off. Then from 15 to 11, it'll only be four stars, which is the way it used to be. And then the five stars start at rank 10. So that's all that's changed. Nothing else. Uh, everything else is basically exactly the same. Win streaks happen until five. You'll go back four ranks at the end of the season. It's just going to make climbing faster. Uh, it, it also will mean that there's going to be... I think, I think this must mean not only were people complaining that five stars every rank felt like too much of a grind, but probably they looked at statistics. I'm going to go ahead and just make a guess here. They looked at statistics and saw people were still bunching up too much at the bottom and there wasn't what they wanted, I think, which is somewhat of an even distribution throughout all of it, where people kind of hover around a spot like you say, I go from 10 to 5 every month. Yeah. They wanted people to be like, I go from 22 to 18 every month, right? And then kind of do that. Maybe they were seeing people just kind of getting bunched at the bottom and going from like 22 to 21 or 22 to 20 and then falling back a bunch. And then they wanted people to kind of always be either pushing a little bit forward or staying, you know, somewhat even. And I guess that's probably not what was happening. So yeah, that will definitely change that. Anything to add on this? <laughs> Nothing really to say Not about really. this, is there? I mean, I think it's really great, like I said, that the the time to get from 50 to 25 is going to be drastically sure. reduced. The rewards are the same. I think that's really nice for new players, and I think that's kind of what this is built for, right, is the, yeah. is the lower end of the ladder. Well, it keeps the competitive... I use that term very loosely, but like the competitive part of the ladder stays the same, so like the climb from 10 up to legend is the same. So I think yeah. that that's... I think this is good. Um, it doesn't, you know, diminish the achievement at all, no. I guess is the, the best way to put it. So, I mean, I'm still, I'm still going to cross my fingers and hope that they institute a ban on the ladder, but I mean, Ooh, the, that, that is a, that is a still apparently a, a sticky topic for some people. I had a, I had a whole yeah. discussion in my, in my stream the other day about that, where I was saying, I really want a ban on the ladder. And someone was like, but then if I play the best deck, I won't be able to play it. And I was like, no, you'll still be able to play it because not everyone will ban well, that's it. The thing. And, I mean, yeah. You, yeah, not everyone will ban the same thing. Like the thing about it is that you can basically a ban on the ladder allows you to better play what you want to play because yeah. and not everyone's going to want to play the same thing. So, yeah, there are going to be people who are just going to straight up ban the best deck. But in general, I will ban the best deck against whatever it is that I want to play, which will yes. always be the same thing. Like just take a look at tournaments is the easiest example. Tournaments have bans. Not everyone bans the same deck because everyone brings different lineups. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's basically the, my argument too, is that it'll open up the ability to play decks that I currently cannot play on the ladder because I just lose to Hunter, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Like I, I can't, I can't play a deck that I find fun because it loses to the current best deck. Yeah. Uh, and if I, want to just play the current best deck, then I'll just play against all the people who have let that through and it'll be a little bit more even. It to me what it really kind of ends up doing is it kind of squashes the uh the percentages down a little bit because everybody It does, yeah, it changes the variance of your <laughs> yeah. ladder experience, which should be something everybody wants, right? Like yeah. the ability to queue into a ladder and have a better chance at a better matchup. Like everybody you queue into will essentially be not your worst matchup, right? So yes, it'll exactly. always be You're something else. Your worst matchup off the yeah. table. It'll be something else besides that. Which and that's, be good that seems interesting to me and seems very cool. Uh, especially so yeah. when like in our current meta where there are so many viable decks and so many different ways to play. I mean, it's not like we're in the, and we're going to talk about it in a second. It's not like we're in the undertaker meta mm. where like there was one best deck. <laughs> it's like now there's no, so we're many. in the undertaker meta. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we are absolutely not, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like there's sure. just, there's so many different ways to play that I think a, a band is a viable thing for ladder now, whereas it, it wouldn't have been in the early days. of I, Yeah. I think we actually, a long time ago, somebody emailed about that and we said, no, nah, probably not. And you know, yeah. that was just a different era of Hearthstone. And I think now it just makes too much damn sense. Yep. So this is, this is a, you know, an update to the ladder. Cool, fun. We're still waiting on the big one that Ben Brode hinted at two years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a but, while ago. Yeah. And plans might have changed. The team sure. has changed up a lot. And if there's anything that I think the team is doing a lot more than they had been in the past is just making changes. Yeah. So they, they seem, seem very willing to yeah. do stuff, which is great. Even reverting changes that they made previously, it's yeah. like they're willing to admit that, oh, yeah, this didn't work. We're going back to three stars. Like, yeah, that's actually a very interesting point is that this was a change that they, like they reverted this. This is essentially yes. what they did while keeping the good parts of it. Right. So yeah. um, that's that's a really good sign when a company is willing to say, yeah, that didn't quite work. And it's one thing that Blizzard has always, I think, been really good at is being like, oh, it didn't really work out the way we wanted it to. So whoops, get rid of it. Yeah. Here's a change. We're going yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. They literally scrapped entire games when they didn't do the thing yeah. they wanted them to. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, we also have some XR stuff. We, apparently, he's been he's been a chatty Cathy uh, this week. <laughs> so uh, let's see. We've got two. Let's two. Yeah, two different articles. Um, one. I didn't read this one. So the first this one comes the to Undertaker us from thing. Reddit. Okay. Yeah. So this is basically um, the January 27th was the fourth anniversary of the Undertaker nerf. Ah. And so Ixar went on to Reddit and was talking all about. Basically These are just, just Reddit comments. Online. Is that what this is? Yeah. This ah. is, yeah. He wrote one big, huge, long Reddit comment Got that it. was basically just looking back on Nax in general because it was the first. I believe it was his first expansion that he mm -hmm. worked on with Hearthstone like that's kind of when he came into in onto the team so uh, well, Max was the first uh, expansion well yes yeah, but <laughs> also it his was first it expansion. was the first piece of content sure, for that Hearthstone he worked on yes yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh yeah he talked all about uh there were five different cards that he talked about undertaker death lord mad scientist sledge belcher and void caller mm. and uh gave some insight into both the previous design philosophy and, you know, uh, their current design philosophy. And so with Undertaker, it was <laughs> really interesting, actually, because, I mean, we talk all the time about how the size of the team has changed. But he said the whole content design team was four people. Oh, geez. <laughs> so they didn't even test Undertaker in Hunter. Oh, my God. <laughs> They, they were like, hey, Undertaker it's sweet and priest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh -huh. okay. Well, that yep. seems like it's really going to miss. Uh, he actually That's did straight said. up He's say. Like, it was yeah. a total miss in yeah. terms of balance. Like, yeah. it was a whoops. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Um, That's funny. That's because yeah. they, they also put out Undertaker at the same time as Death Lord, Mad Scientist, Sludge Belcher, Void Color, which are all freaking yeah. really, really good death rattle cards. Yep, exactly. Uh, he also talked about Death Lord saying it was originally a 2 6 okay. instead of 2 8, which. Um, I think two eight is probably actually much better balanced as much as they were a pain in the butt to get through when they pull any opponent's minion onto the battlefield, it can be punished really badly. So yeah, that's funny because dirty rat, it then ended up being a two six. Yep. Which does kind of a similar thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, death Lord is still pretty rampant and wild. Um, it's, you see it quite often. It's uh, in Reno Lock. It's in any type of mill strategy, which there's not a lot of mill strategy left. Um, most of the rogues are not playing the mill thing anymore. They're playing... Uh, there is still Kingsbane, but they're playing like an aggro pirate Kingsbane now mm. because they can't heal forever. Because right? they can't so, heal, yeah. yeah, so they have to kill you. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, oh, I better kill this guy. Uh, <laughs> but you still do see it you know, quite frequently and it still screws up your strategy and stuff. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's I was watching, cool. uh, I was watching Dane play the other day and I was like, Oh man, I forgot death Lord was even a thing. <laughs> Someone played it against him. And I was just like, damn, yep. two yep. eights of taunt trying to get through that early game. Whew, yeah. It just destroys aggro. Like you're like, Oh, yeah. uh Oh, 
You know, I will say though, like, by when the I'm time playing... you get through that, then it pulls out a one drop for you, and then sure. they drop Sludge Belcher, and then you just cry. <laughs> yeah. Well, but when I was playing the the Odd Rogue, it was actually I, I find this funny about the Odd Rogue is it is an aggro deck, but it has lots of ways to just kind of deal damage, and then the two damage dagger just kind of stacks up, right? So yeah. getting through a two eight on turn three is actually not that tough when I have. You know, already built up a decent board of pirates, and then I, and then also that deck has Bile Spine Slayer, so it's like sometimes yeah. you just murder whatever's in your way. Uh, Mad Scientist, they knew was strong. Uh, let's see, Sludge Belcher was designed to be better than Druid of the Claw, which I guess they considered the best taunt minion at the time. I guess it was at the time, yeah, it sure. did, it was. And then they also, he also talked about how Sludge Belcher kind of went on to inform the creation of a mm. lot of the other neutral taunt minions because they liked how sludge belcher worked so much that um everything all the way from annoyatron through giggling inventor like witchwood grizzly all that stuff was basically designed based on the success of sludge belcher so huh. um they decided that that was having a strong neutral taunt minion was a really good way to keep aggro from just running over the entire field with every new release so Sludge Belcher is why we now see pretty much one single strong taunt neutral minion in each set that's yeah. come out. Zilliax, I would say, too. Zilliax, yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then Voidcaller, not a card they would make in present-day Hearthstone. Thank God. By the way, in the <laughs> in the uh, cube warlock that I was playing a while, Void, Voidcaller is uh, pretty key in that one. Because you can play that, and then... So on turn four, you can play that, plus the zero cost, kill your own demon, gain five yep. health. And then you just pull a friggin' Void Daddy onto the field on turn five. It's pretty disgusting. Or turn four, so. Yeah, and I, I did find this comment kind of interesting because he was talking about how early game it could snowball and you could pull Void Collar into Malganus and stuff, which was super strong. And he said they wouldn't make it in present day Hearthstone, but then they made Skull of the Minari, which on turn, mm. I guess turn six, well, turn Duh. five, you play it. Turn six, the demon hits, yeah. and it can't yeah. attack. And but yeah, but I see still, what you're like it's it's still kind of similar. And they did slow it down by a couple of turns, sure. but it's the effect is is very very similar. It also has counterplay, which void caller you can void just play it and kill you it. You have to science it, silence yeah. it, science it. But I mean, if <laughs> you play it and kill it, you, there's no counterplay to that, right? Like I can play yeah. my skull of Minari, and then I have a turn to have response, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the the whole cheating of mana thing, it's important in card games because it allows you to do these power spikes, right? Which is kind of like you build the deck around being able to do something that's a little unfair and that's what makes it good, right? Yeah. So you always want to have those. The, 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 the key is rein them in so that they're not absolutely busted compared to what other people can do or right. how you can respond to them, right? So that's mm -hmm. always the trick. Uh, then he also talked to Cam Shea over at IGN, who we every time there's an interview with Cam Shea, we talk about it on this show. Uh, and uh, there he talked about the Rostacon early nerfs, which uh, still the you know the effects are reverberating right now through the ladder. Uh, by the way, in Wild also, very few druids. Um, and in fact, most of the ones that I ran into were all basically just jade druid. Hmm. They're not doing all that late game combo and stuff anymore. Yeah. I know I'm going to get some hate from this, uh -oh. but I, I really liked Jay Druid. I really it's did. It's fine and wild. It's I, totally yeah. just a good deck. It's just like a good, solid thing to do. Yeah, I, I, I really, I enjoyed playing it. I enjoyed playing against it. I know a lot of people really didn't like it, but... I, I liked the jade mechanic. I thought it was cool. I thought it was okay. Like the the thing is is that <laughs> <laughs> the thing is is that uh is that when it was happening, you knew early on what you were up against, and you knew mm -hmm. kind of then how you would adjust your game plan, right? Yeah. It's like okay, I got to kill this guy before this gets out of hand. The thing yeah. is, imagine though if Druid had the jade thing now in standard with all of the armor gain as well. It would mm. it would feel like even without the ramp because they also had just the other way to ramp, right? The jade way to ramp, jade blossom. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. It's just it would I be. See, I can see how it would be and broken. I'm surprised with... it's not broken over in wild because yeah, you're right. Like I feel like and maybe it's just because there are so many overpowered things happening. Yeah, in wild, there's more ways to kill them. It doesn't matter how much armor they gain. Yeah. 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 But uh, I do. I can totally see how constantly growing jade dudes plus 
infinite almost armor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus be a problem. gain 80 armor in, in a game. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it could be a little much. Uh, but basically, so they uh, they talked about the early nerfs, and he said uh, the early nerfs happened because they knew that they wanted to make it. Basically, what he said is it wasn't that we just never wanted to make them before. It was just that we didn't know exactly how we wanted to make the changes before this quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. And and uh, he also mentioned, like, they had the resources to do it. Uh, so it sounded to me like Rastakhan came out. People kind of just had time to actually do the implementation and they already had figured out the things that they maybe wanted to change. And then I'm sure the data just kind of lined up and everything just kind of just all kind of happened. Right. Like, well, oh, I feel yeah, like, yeah, because right with with Rastakhan and it's going to be this way with every third expansion, they have a lot longer of like breathing time between now and when the next expansion comes out, like sure. Rastakhan dropped at the beginning of December. We're not going to get another expansion till April. So I feel like they very much can kind of sit back and take a breather and be like, Oh, okay. We actually can figure this out. We've got some resources. We've got some time. We don't have to really start pushing on the next expansion until probably we come back from the Christmas break. So, you know, what's the best way to deal with things right now? Okay. Let's just go. Let's sure. Code yeah. it, push it, do it. It also, to me, I think, and I, he didn't mention it here, but it had to be the amount of new cards being played. Yeah. Was lower than they wanted it to be, right? And well, and I think that they probably even knew that going into the sure. expansion launch. I mean, when you looked at the way that the meta was and then the new cards that were coming in, it's just like, why would anyone play the new cards when the old cards were just so powerful? Yeah, the third expansion is always going to have this issue. So a third yeah. expansion, I think, should be definitely the time to look at nerfing while you put out cards. Yeah. Um, because they also, you know, they could have nerfed death knights they could have nerfed all sorts of other stuff they just basically said okay let's just open up the field a little bit mm -hmm. uh take away some of the druid power level and just you know give everybody else something to do uh by the way he uh also did mention that the hunter power level is high they're aware and they're <laughs> watching it closely yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that uh then there was a question in a broad sense how happy are you guys with the with the post nerf meta he says they're pretty happy uh, popularity power level of Hunter is high right now, so that's something, blah, 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 I just mentioned. Uh, but it's been stabilizing. Uh, they're still looking at it closely. They have meta reports that come in every single day. We monitor not only where stuff is, but where it is trending. Where do we think things will be going in a month or two months? Where do we think things are going to be uh, in the month leading to the next expansion? If we feel like it's going to be really positive, then no changes. But if they do feel like changes need to happen, obviously they... He, he just... it He really comes off as like, man, we're willing to make changes. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. This is just how it is now. It, it, they, he did also, though, say they still have the philosophy that they don't want to just make changes to make changes. Yes. Which I know that some people are, have argued for, and I think we've even talked about it. Like, it's just nice when things change, mm -hmm. but they are still very adamant about, no, we don't want to just change things to change things. We want to change things with a purpose. I feel like at one point we were talking about how it might be nice if there were nerfs or buffs or changes or whatever on almost a monthly basis. So yeah. each month would have a different meta, each month would have a different feel, and it would be slightly punishing to, uh, I guess, returning players or new players, you know, that constantly have to get or come back and something, to everything's totally different. Yeah. But for players that play, you know, daily, weekly, then it would be a nice shakeup every once in a while with a new sure. season. So. Yeah, for players like us, it would be nice, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's just the best thing, for sure. Yeah, exactly. I can see I both sides really of that story. I don't think that the, the majority of Hearthstone players are players like us. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm <laughs> sure that they have that data, and they're like, yeah, yeah. there's very few players like <laughs> Might you Might be nice for you guys, but mm -hmm. come on. <laughs> uh, so they also talked about that this week and next week are some of the final weeks where they're working on uh, the first set of this year, which is, you know, like you said, happening in April. Uh, and there was not an effort last year to create expansions with less power because that was one of the questions like, hey, did you try to make these expansions less powerful than Knights of the Frozen Throne because they seem less powerful? Uh, and he was like, no, that wasn't really like a goal. It just I think, you know, with each expansion, they learn something. Right. Yeah. So over time, they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't just put out things like Death Knights every single expansion. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing, right? Like you either have to 
constantly be doing the whole power creep thing or mm -hmm. you have to learn lessons and then it is going to seem like things are suddenly less powerful but it's like no we just we learned a lesson from that so yeah. going forward expect more things like witchwood and less things like frozen throne <laughs> sure and, and like ungoro had a lot of power level yeah. to it as well so yeah um and then uh in introducing new archetypes was a goal it didn't doesn't matter how many of the older cards get brought along they just want new things happening uh, yeah. So even if it's like two cards make a new archetype, that's still something that they want to try to make happen. It doesn't matter if you then fill it with a bunch of old cards, which mm -hmm. I, you know, I get. I, I still... feel like that's like that has odd <laughs> and even written all over it. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It's like they're so proud of that. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> you made a new way to play Paladin with one card. Cool. But like, I, so, OK, so I'm a little bit annoyed with the whole. Oh man, isn't it sweet that Raid Late Raid Leader came back? Like I'm just like I no, I don't Or Wind Fury Harpy. <laughs> I don't need these classic and basic cards to just keep coming back and then be like, look, it's like a new card. It's like, no, yeah. it's an old card. I've been playing with that card forever. Uh I still very much in the camp of rotating core sets. I really, really want it. <laughs> so badly. Um and that and you could take why you don't have to make a whole new set of cards, but we need about 300-ish cards in the basic classic in the core set. You can mm -hmm. rotate cards from wild into it. And then, anyway, whatever. Different discussion for a different day. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then they also talked about Barnes real quick. And Barnes is still the most annoying thing ever when it gets played against you in wild. Uh, there's really only two classes playing it right now. There's, um, there's Big Priest, obviously, which Big Priest isn't really actually that strong in wild. Obviously, a lot of people still like it so i think you see it more at lower ranks uh but it's power level it, it just gets run over by a lot of decks yeah uh but it's still really annoying when somebody coins barns out and then it hits yasharaj and then it pulls ragnaros and you're like oh cool uh and then there's the hunter the spell hunter that runs only barns and yasharaj so on turn four yeah. it makes uh you know 14 15 uh for four mana yeah, that's still really annoying. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when it happens, you're just like, oh, well, well and I've I got to I imagine lose. that it only was reinforced with like Zuljin coming in. Right. Like, because that sure. was a spell based deck. Right. Except yeah. Yeah. For well, OK. Barnes, the so. other thing is, uh, is what's the burr, burr, what's that card again? Uh, Master's Call. <laughs> yeah. Master's Call. <laughs> <laughs> burr, burr. Uh, <laughs> that card you can use now to also because you only run those two minions in your whole deck. You play Master's Call on three, you discover uh, Barnes. Barnes, And yeah. then you play Barnes on four. So it gives you like more ways to get Barnes, right? <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. Uh, we also had the APAC playoffs uh, this last weekend and I watched very little of it, but some of it. Um, it's it's right in the middle of the night so uh, for us over in north america so yeah it was uh difficult to watch but actually i've decided i like apac playoffs better than any other playoffs because mm, okay. they play super fast yeah. they concede when they when realize they that they can't win yeah so it's like they they play super fast and then they're like oh it's turn six they don't play it out until turn 20 when they know they can't win on turn six they're just like oh bam concede winners <laughs> done <laughs> and because it happens during the middle of the night i can watch the next day mm. and i can skip all of those hmm oh, sequences yeah. which are the worst <laughs> well the problem with them is that you've watched them over and over again they don't have enough that's of them true. or something they don't know? have yeah that's the thing they don't have enough of them so there's yeah. like two or three with the developers two or three with the casters and once you've seen them one time and especially in this round of hmm with the casters <laughs> <laughs> Frodan made a warcraft lore mistake oh no just, like, i bet you were just biting a pillow there, trying not to, to watch scream. it over and over again and i'm like no Frodan, you're wrong Frodan, you're still wrong oh, oh my no. god well he doesn't play wow if kibler was there he would have corrected him i'm sure yeah uh, so the like, uh, four players that made it through, Definition, Roger, uh, Tansoku, and Tyler. And Tyler, this is like uh, maybe the third or fourth time or something. I've seen his name so many times in these things. 
recently. Yeah. That's, so, uh, well, that's Tyler, cool. Tyler has kind of a unique story because I feel like he has a lot more name recognition than some of the other APAC players because yeah. he actually used to live and compete over in EU and yeah. did very well over there, but, you know, didn't co quite have like the breakout performances. Like his year this year has been extraordinarily good. He's actually the, um, the APAC points leader right now. Uh huh. So he's had a really, really good season over in APAC. And he actually, he has like the most heart wrenching, amazing story because he actually lost his father a week before this playoff. Oh my God. Wow. So he like, I, I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, but it was absolutely just heartbreaking. And he wasn't even sure if he was going to go. And then he <laughs> literally didn't practice, just kind of went to his practice group and said, okay, what are the easiest decks to pilot like I don't want any shenanigans nothing I just want something super easy I want to get in I want to win and it was like his dad's final like wish is that he just keep following his Hearthstone dream and and competing at a really high level and you know doing his best and then he came into APAC and and won a spot so wow. he's already qualified for worlds yeah uh, because he is the points leader so he's already qualified for the world championships but if um, it's another kind of one of those conditions that we talked about and why the winter championships is going to be so interesting is because if Tyler ends up qualifying for worlds through the winter championships, then instead of doing the playoff that they'll have to do, if some of the other players uh, win at winter, um, he actually will qualify through winter making the APAC points leader, somebody else. Ah, so like before we talked person, about with yeah. like, bunny hopper and stuff if they if bunny hopper qualifies again then they have to do a playoff between people yeah, who finish but apac eight. works differently huh interesting uh, and apac doesn't work different it only works differently because of the it being the points leader who could potentially qualify oh, oh, oh i see because, what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. points leader they go down the list not a tournament entrant yeah, yeah. okay so uh actually with the apac points it's also again even more interesting because mm. um tyler's first and then technically blood trail is second but Blood Trail has already qualified for the World Championships through HCT Fall, which means that they'll actually go to third place for points leader, which is Rebus. So, wow, there's, uh, yeah, it's it's becoming really, really interesting. And I think we talked about this uh, last week, where uh, just about consistency of players and how interesting this year has been because of the Hearthstone Masters program. That um, high level players who qualify through summer and fall continue on and continue trying to earn points because they had a reason to outside sure. of just uh, qualifying for the world championships. So yeah. it's really, I think this year put a fine point on how consistent these players really are because we haven't seen it in past years because they've kind of qualified and then yeah. And then taking a break. Taken breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or focused on streaming or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I think it's been really interesting to see these players you know, qualify and still be points leader and, you know, stuff like that, like blood trail. So I, it's, uh, this HTT winter is, is going to be really, really interesting. And then obviously the championships too are going to be amazing. So, uh, yep. HTT winter is actually February 28th until March 3rd from 8 30 AM PST until 8 30 PM PST. So four 12 hour days of Hearthstone. <laughs> Yikes. Coming at the end of the month. Yeah. Or that's the end of that's only 16 players. It's going to take that yes. long. Oh my yeah. God. All right. Well, they do. Well, it's, it's really high stakes, right? There's sure. a lot of money and there's uh, the spots in the championship. So they definitely take there's all the pomp and circumstance really... as well. The players all yeah, come exactly, out and the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So I think they do um, group play for the first two days. So group uh, A and B will be day one. C and D will be day two. And then they go down to, um, top eight and that's double elimination and yeah there's a there's a whole bunch of different stages of the HTT seasonal championships that they don't do in some of the playoffs sure, and stuff sure. so yeah yeah so we do now know all 16 of our players so Ike Knoblord Bobby X by the way I played Bobby X last night on stream I beat oh, yeah. him I beat him <laughs> oh, it was so a wild. Should be going to championships that's I should works. be there I should just replace him now <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bloody Face will be there. Uh, Viper, Faley, Thunder Up, and Bunny Hopper. Definition Roger, Tenso uh, Tansoku, and Tyler, like we mentioned. And then from China, uh, Go Lion King, LF Young Ying, Yo Ying. Okay, I'm definitely saying that wrong. And <laughs> SN Jing and uh, Cameo. Cameo? Cameo, yep. Cameo. All right. There you go. Those are your 16 guys going. Should be, uh, should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. 
All and right. then one final piece of esports news, actually, that oh. I, I don't want us to miss is that uh, they, at the very, very end of the blog post, there was this little tiny blurb that said, more information about the new competitive format and all the plans for 2019 are going to be revealed on February 19th. Ooh. It was the last sentence on the blog post all the way at the bottom, even below the like, we're done now graphic. Yeah. It was really and then it's the it's first like comment is referencing it because apparently <laughs> yeah. everybody is like, uh, yeah, that's burying Maybe the lead. With that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's good because it has been kind of, we're, we've been kind of in limbo uh, when it comes to that, not knowing what the hell been. the new format is. Because I would like to copy whatever it is for the DHL and, you know, like right? try it out, whatever it is. All right, well, that's going to do it for news. But before we move into our strategy section, we do have to thank our sponsor for the day. We've got HelloFresh sponsoring the show. HelloFresh.com slash uh, TAC80 is the code to use. And uh, I, I recently got my HelloFresh, uh, mm -hmm. showed up at my door, and oh, my God. It's just like Christmas morning when I open my door and there's the HelloFresh outside. Uh, so achieving your 2019 goals is as easy as enjoying delicious home-cooked meals with HelloFresh. You can get seasonal, simple recipes, pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door every week so you can enjoy cooking and sticking to your goals uh, if you made, you made health-related goals this year. Which it I think doesn't make that's what everybody does every year. Come on, yeah. <laughs> But nobody it says I'm going to eat more candy in yeah. 2019. That would be the best goal. I would kill that goal all year. Yeah, I used to make yeah. that goal when I was a little kid. I'd be like, I, this year, more cake. <laughs> but most of you are probably making yeah. a goal for 2019 that is eat healthier that and HelloFresh. It's a great way to do that. HelloFresh makes cooking at home fun and easy. All meals come together in 30 minutes max. Uh, call for less than two pots and pans and require minimal cleanup. I can definitely attest to that. That's one of the most annoying things to me about cooking, which is what keeps me from doing it, is that at the end, now I have to clean all this crap up. <laughs> right? And everything in HelloFresh so is like... Work, and yeah. then you eat, and then you turn around, and you're like, oh, God. Yeah. Okay, we just don't use that room anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It, it no longer exists. I think we have to move. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I just made a big-ass meal. burn it down. That's better than cleaning. <laughs> uh, you also have three plans to choose from, classic, veggie, and family. And the family option will give you uh, more food if you have more, more mouths to feed. With the option to switch between when your tastes change. Uh, so yeah, I recently I made the, uh, this was really cool is that I made the spaghetti thing again, which I had tried before, but this time because I had made it before, I was like, I was like in there just like experimenting around. It. Yeah. I, I <laughs> looked at the pictures, but at this point I was like, I'm an expert at this. Uh, by the way, it also came with something that I'd never put on my spaghetti before. It was like a little, a little hot pepper oil thing. And oh my God, it was so good. It was so freaking good. Uh, so, yeah, I highly recommend. Check out uh, HelloFresh.com. Use the code TAC80. So HelloFresh.com slash TAC80 and then enter the code TAC80. That will give you $80 off your first month. It's a lot of dollars. It's a lot of dollars off. Uh, so definitely check that out. Again, HelloFresh.com slash TAC80. Enter the code TAC80. All right, let's move into strategy. We're talking today about Evolve Shaman. Hit it very hard. You wanna blow something up? Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha! <laughs> Time to pay! Alright, so we are talking today about uh kind of a fun deck. It's not really a deck to climb with. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just <laughs> open with that. But uh Kibler is known from playing some Interesting off meta decks and being able to do somewhat well with them. Uh, in fact, Elemental Mage, Elemental Hand Mage, I have played a bit of, and maybe we could talk about that next week, but it's really good right now. It's actually in a pretty decent spot. So, uh, although I don't really know, we'll wait till Thursday to figure out what deck we're going to do for next week because we have two days between the next show. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we won't, we won't concern ourselves with that yet. Uh, but this deck is, so the, ver the first version I'm going to talk about is based around playing like a tokeny style strategy uh and then bloodlusting at some point that's kind of your win condition right but then you have a secondary win condition which is uh which is evolving and cragwiring back your unstable evolutions and doing it all again which uh, that part i find super fun it's so fun yeah yeah 
And then uh, you, you cast Unstable Evolution so many times in one turn, mm -hmm. and then you don't get one copy back. You get however many copies you cast. So you can yeah. basically fill your hand with Unstable Evolutions and then just do it again and again and again and again. So also what it allows you to do is when you draw that frog and you have the evolve in your hand, you know, a lot of times you're like waiting for the perfect turn to Unstable Evolution. Like I need to be able to cast it a bunch of times and get, you know, two nine drops or something. You could kind of frivolously just use the first one because mm -hmm. then, yeah, like you said, you get like four or five of them back the next turn. And now you've just got a bunch of them for the rest of the game. So to me, it's just like one of those things. It just opens up the possibility of, well, now I just evolve because I can this turn, right? Not yeah. because this is the best time to do it and I'm not overloaded and I have nine mana and all that kind of stuff. You can the first time you can just go. Uh, and so a lot of times, like, you know, it's, that's really what makes it fun is that I don't have to sit here and pick and choose my optimal moment. I can just kind of have fun with it. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. that's what Fragwa allows you to do. Uh, so like I said, this one is a little bit more of a tokeny thing. So it uses the Thunderhead with things like Zap and Lightning Bolt to produce a lot of little one ones. They rush, they don't charge, but, um, I find that currently in the meta, there's not that many decks that are just big AOE in your board. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just make them and leave them there. And, and they just sit there and they're yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're one ones and then you can start evolving them. By the way, yeah, uh, someone in the chat just brought up Radiant. So there's two ways to go infinite with this. You can get, uh, you can get Sorcerer's, is it Sorcerer's Apprentice or Radiant Elemental. And both of those will then make, and there are two drops, and both of them mm -hmm. will make all of your evolves cost zero. So... If you evolve your one drops first, try to get those and then just start going to town. If if you get it, you have to then start rushing. But you can get uh, a bunch of, you know, eight eights or whatever you want out of it. Um, so how often does that actually happen? Where you It's get really rare. So, so, OK, yeah. it's <laughs> so really rare, but it happens. Not a specific game plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hachikuma and Chad asks, would Violet Teachers work in this? Yeah, probably. I don't see why not. I think it's just Violet Teacher and Thunderhead would kind of overlap what they're doing. Yeah. But you could absolutely throw some Violet Teachers in. Because also, if you have Violet Teacher plus Unstable, you play Unstable, and then it makes a 1-1, one, one, and then you can start evolving that 1-1 one, one if you want. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so. <laughs> so many chances at sure. Radiant Elementals. <laughs> so there's a couple of interesting cards that are in this deck that I kind of want to highlight. Uh, obviously, Hagatha is like a third win condition, because once you get Hagatha down, it's just value Sometimes overload. Sometimes she just wins, yeah. Yeah, yeah just insane. Uh, but then I want to bring up this card, Bog Shaper, that's in here. Um, this is a Kibler special, but it's really interesting because it's the deck doesn't have a lot of minions, but the ones that are in it are pretty important and key. And uh, I actually found Bog Shaper to be a pretty sweet card. I, I thought seven mana four eight, that's probably bad, mm -hmm. but I could play like Bog Shaper and Zap on the same turn and instantly like get value. And then uh, it just allows you and then it usually doesn't die the next turn. So then the next turn, I just start cycling through my deck really quickly. So. It's actually a pretty sweet card, and I definitely don't think I'd want two copies of it ever, but one copy. There also dope. are quite a lot of cheap spells in this deck. There's yeah. not only Zap, but then you've got Lightning Bolts, you've got Voltaic Burst, you've got Earthen Mites, yep. and if you play Earthen Might on your Bog Shaper, then you've also, you know, you're buffing it up and getting a random elemental, so yep. there is a little bit of synergy there as well, so... Yeah, it also it's kind of runs a good. small elemental package uh, on yeah. top of running some of the other stuff. Just because Thunderhead's an elemental... Uh, obviously, Tolvir Stone Shaper is really good in the meta because of all the spell stones running around mm -hmm. uh, from hunters. Uh, you know, Tolvir Stone Shaper kills three wolves, right? So, I mean, yeah. how could you not play that right now if you're playing <laughs> elementals, right? And then, of course, it's a sleeper, it's a corridor creeper. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, seven mana two five sucks, but hey, when it costs zero and then it evolves into an eight drop, <clears throat> yeah, pretty good. Yep. To get it. You can just turn it with one simple unstable evolution. You can turn that thing right into a Lich King. So uh, I, I want to bring up uh, another version of it. And unfortunately, I would only have the deck code, but it's in. It'll be in the show notes if you guys want to talk about it. I'm not going to like talk about it too much, but I just tried this out because I thought it was kind of interesting. And that is to take Viper's Peanut Shaman Package, which I don't know if people are super familiar with, but essentially it is a, essentially it is a control shaman, a control value shaman that just kind of, uh, that just kind of outlasts its opponents, right? It cannot kill 
any of the OTK decks. So <laughs> you just hope and pray that you know, nobody has Mechathunes when you're when you're playing this. But it's got uh, like Storm Surge, um, the Lone Champion, things like that. Zintimo with Hex and all that kind of stuff. The Tidal Surges, the Dragon Moss Scorchers, uh, Elise for a lot of value, and then of course the Shutterwalk. So later on in the game, you play Shutterwalk, and it AOE's the board and draws you a you know a bunch of cards and does all this cool stuff. And then I just threw in the Double Unstable Evolution and Kragwa package into it. And uh, it seemed to work pretty fun. It was just like, um, like it, I, I play, okay, so this deck works really well against Hunter, but I found the deck so boring to play without the, the Unstable <laughs> Evolution package. Once oh, I okay. threw that in, <laughs> yeah, the, the other version, the better mm -hmm. version. <laughs> but once I threw this in, I was like, oh my God. Because Cragwall was already in the other version, just because it gets you like another hex or whatever. Um, but when you can do this plus the unstable thing, it's just crazy. Uh, how like you you take this package and then at some point you're like, but now I get to have a little bit of fun. This is my fun turn, and then the rest of the turns I'm very serious and clearing your board and stuff. So uh, if anybody doesn't like the the tokeny type package, uh, you can try out this one, the the Peanut Frog Volve deck. <laughs> we should also mention if you guys want to play these decks, you should kind of play them soon because um, there's Angoro stuff and uh, Cobalt stuff. That's true. Stable evolution that are going to rotate in a couple months. Yeah, so. you're not going to be able to make Angoro packs anymore. So yeah, in there. no more Elise, no more Unstable evolving. Yep. yep. Yeah. Bad face. Dude, if shamans can't evolve, then what even are they anymore? I know. I feel like we've been <laughs> evolving and devolving for so long in one form yeah. or another. It's been literally years. So. By the way, devolve in wild is still broken as hell. Oh my god. I was playing as a druid and I was playing the even shaman and it just runs the double devolve in the maelstrom. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I just like I just made a giant board and I was like, go ahead, go ahead and make a giant board of one five taunters against me. I don't care. I'm just gonna <laughs> devolve them and go face. So yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, that's going to do it for strategy, but we're going to move into crazy game stories and emails. But before we do, we have another sponsor to thank, and it's Jocelyn's favorite sponsor. It is so much so. <laughs> of course, we're talking today about MeUndies. Uh, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Rather than spending all that money going out to fancy restaurants, why not just hang out in your underwear all night, courtesy of MeUndies? That seems like a great idea to me. I mean, it totally does. And I mean, for me, I don't know if you guys have been to the MeUndies website lately, but the new prints for Valentine's Day are amazing. Mm. They have little smiley face wine glasses next to little smiley face cheeses, and I need 18 pairs. <laughs> so then you buy a 10-pack, a 5-pack, and a 3-pack? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> okay. yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, I look, I said this on my stream the other night. I might as well just say it on the show. Talking, oh, no. about, talking about packages in your decks. <laughs> MeUndies does great things for packages. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> they are extraordinarily comfortable. And the mm. reason that we talk about them mm -hmm. all the time and why they're our favorite is because of how great they actually feel. They're three times softer than, com than common, than cotton. <laughs> than common cotton, yeah. Common cotton, yeah. <laughs> and they actually do feel really, really great. They're their micromodal fabric. I don't even know what that means. I just know. I just know it's good. It's good. Yep. <laughs> By the way, yeah. So the the onesie that I have, the entire thing is made out of that fabric. So imagine it's not just over your package. It's over your whole body. It is pretty it's sweet. It's the whole package. It's the whole package. Everything. <laughs> My entire package covered in it. Uh, so yeah. So uh, if you want to get 50% off your first pair and free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, you go to MeUndies.com slash T-A-C. Of course, MeUndies.com slash T-A-C. The way to do that, 15% off. I'm I'm saying that's a lot of monies again. We're saving you guys monies. Uh and yeah, if if you want to make your uh your significant other, your loved one feel special, some meundies with some wine glasses on them, right? Yep. Do it. <laughs> All right, let's move into crazy game stories. Is the whole world got crazy. You're in trouble now. You got it. You can send crazy game stories to techpodcast at gmail.com. Make sure to put crazy game story in the title. Uh, what do we got today, Jocelyn? Uh, this one comes to us from Josh C. who says, good evening. 
me polos and mm-hmm. you know, oh geez that's a canadian <laughs> trying to speak yeah, that's spanish canadian trying to spanish Mis pollos en rayados. there you go All thank right. you <laughs> our resident texan just fixed that for me yeah yeah <laughs> I come with one of the most excitingly dull finishes to a game I've had in a while. Playing in an online tournament for some practice, I queued up against the same auctioneer Mechathune Druid player that had given me my first loss early in the tournament. Sticking with Odd Warrior as my last deck, I know I have little to no chance against his machine gun draws. The game goes as predicted with me trying to find anything I can to go aggro, and my opponent just playing solitaire, spell stoning, and drawing away. His deck already in fatigue and combo pieces in hand. He has a buff wild pyro on board against my beryllium nullifier. I reach for the concede when I realize that if the pyro doesn't die, neither can I right away. Unable to shield slam the nullifier, my hopes dangle on a 50-50 brawl. Success! My opponent plays out his combo, but uses the natural eyes to finish off the pyro and leaves big daddy Mechathune on board against my 60 combined health and armor. From there, it's a race to sabotage ourselves. Me trying to play as few cards as possible and him trying to kill off his only card. Successive turns of playing Stonehill Defender and Shield Bearer followed by some awesome Super Collider hits to the face, which is totally where Super Collider is meant to go. (laughs) Five mana, three damage. Yep. (laughs) Uh, Using a Dragon Moss Scorcher to destroy some one ones before he can suicide the Mechathune into them and then shield slamming my own poor dragon. He's dropping from fatigue while I'm taking 10 to the face now. But the gamble paid off as I dropped to three health and then he drops from fatigue. A game one on about eight straight turns of actively trying not to play Hearthstone. Oh. Wow, indeed. <laughs> That's crazy. The, uh, yeah, so that guy totally screwed up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the guy you played against should not have uh, even played his Megathune yet. He should have just waited until he could kill off his Pyromancer on one of your dudes. But all right. Hey, sometimes the <laughs> other guy screws up. Yep. <laughs> and it makes a crazy game story. All right, before we move into emails, uh, uh, we want to thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash TAC, which is how you can support this very show if you are so inclined. We really, really appreciate all of our patrons. They are the best. And uh, they make this show possible for us to be going into episode 300 on Thursday. So that's just crazy. That is crazy. There has been some of you since the beginning, essentially, since we've had a Patreon. And we really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, we want to thank this week specifically Hagernator, Adam E. and David M. Thank you guys so, so very much. Again, patreon.com slash TAC is where you can go to support this very show. And now, let's hear from you guys. Hello. Hello. It's me. Hello. Um, just quickly, do you get my message? Yep. Oh. Hello, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first email comes to us from Craig. Again, if you want to email us and tell us anything or ask us any questions, you can do that at tagpodcast at gmail.com. Or if you are a patron, you can reach us directly in our Discord. We have a channel specifically set up to take questions from you guys and field them. So that's a way to get straight through all the hullabaloo right to us. We look at that every week. (laughs) The hullabaloo? All that hullabaloo going on in email. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, I do. <laughs> Wading through it. Oh, I'm just trying to get to the chickens. Uh, Craig <laughs> says, bellicose birds. With the end of the current meta fast approaching, I'm looking at filling out my classic cards collection. What must-haves do you suggest I spend my dust on? Thanks. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I don't think about this very often as I just have all those cards now. Right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Jocelyn, do you have any must-haves in the classic collection? It kind of depends what classes you'd like to play and what the holes are like in your classic card collection. Because uh, I know for me, I love playing Hunter and mm. Recruit just started to be a big thing. And I didn't even realize that a legendary King Crush, I didn't even have it in my collection. Whoa. So I think, yeah. It, it, because well, it was always it, a terrible card forever. It was a terrible yeah. card that never saw play. But it turns out when you get it for free, mm-hmm. it's really good. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. So I think uh, it, it does kind of depend, but I think things like Van Cleef and Tyrion are probably safe. And then uh, the one thing I would say is possibly hold off to see what's going to get Hall of Famed. You might get some more value for your dust there because with the Hall of Fame cards, at least in the past, they you've gotten to keep your copies, but they've given you the dust back. Yeah. So that's those are kind of like safe crafts, but um, 
Yeah, Phil J. Fry in uh, chat says Blood Mage Thalnos. I, I agree with that. <clears throat> I think that's yeah, a pretty that's good call. Yeah, that's another good one. Especially since Thalnos is neutral and, you know, like does a whole bunch of different things or a whole bunch of different classes. He's, you know, yeah. spell damage. He's, he's any, also... Any uh, time there's like a combo deck that wants to draw a lot and also wants to clear your board with spells, that card's always going to be a potential to go in. Mm -hmm. uh, I also just think, yeah, just look at a lot of the like rares and epics that just seem to pop up a lot because um, there's a ton of them. And I would say, yeah, probably try to fill out your neutrals because, yeah, because of the fact that they're never going away, according to Blizzard, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> having all those neutrals will uh, just allow you to have more decks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, neutrals is a really good place to start, I think. Um, I mean, we've even seen, <laughs> and I know we talked about this earlier, and I don't want to send Dills into a raid leader rage again, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. raid leaders, Stormwind Cards Champions, come back in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cards do come back in. So um, anything that's, you know, not a Yeti, <laughs> you sure. know, anything with an effect is yeah. probably something to look at. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, so, I mean, that's always a tough one, though, because, yeah, you never really know right now. Like, right now, yeah. with every new set we get, cards come back in right like i would have mm -hmm. never expected raid leader to be a card like you know storm wind champion i would have never expected that to be a card that's actually in a deck so uh yeah i, I would that's say that's why i think you know kind of any cards with text always i think have the potential to yeah. be, become useful i would say any cards that are just like straight up minions you probably don't need but um anything that has text anything that does anything Start with the stuff that's useful now and sure. then kind of work your way back from there. Uh, oh, I'd also say Alex Straza and Malagos are probably always going to be cards that can end up in decks. Mm hmm. Because they do very powerful, get, specific things. Again, unless they get unless Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. But if they get Hall of Fame, you get your dust back. So you, you get your dust yeah. back. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of safe, I think, to craft. Because sure. I, I really do expect. If not both, at least Malagos, I think. At some point, right? All of yeah, because yeah. it just it seems like there's just so many decks that exploit him. <laughs> and well, he's it's neutral, been right? the way so, to do a bunch of spell damage forever for six yeah, years. Yeah. So. so it's got to be limiting design space, right? Yeah. Like we need another way to, to do it. Yeah. Uh, what's our next email, Jocelyn? Uh, this one comes to us from Ryan, and this is over in the patron discord. It says, hey, friendos, I've been thinking about a new game mode. Diablo mm. 3 is my favorite game, and the way I most enjoy it is the seasons. We already have seasonal rankings in Hearthstone, but what I propose is a new type that's separate from your collection. In Diablo 3 seasons, you get a fresh start, and it's exciting to get Legend alongside with the ability to compete on a global scale. Suppose we get a fresh start and the grind is no longer just ladder, but also the opening of packs. Packs, And so you would get packs for winning, for uh, daily quests, for completing games while not conceding, uh, seasonal challenge list, etc. With your main collection gone, you would see new deck archetypes and there would be the fun of getting that one card to push you forward. For our D3 comparison, we could have rankings not just for wins, but for multiple categories like most packs opened, most dust accumulated, most wins, most hero damage, most minions defeated, etc. Also, no buying packs with real money for fair competition. I want something different where I still feel like I'm being rewarded. Going on huge losing streaks where I can't even lose more stars starts to get punishing. I have tier one decks, but I guess I don't play them enough to improve and I'm finding it hard to justify buying cards. A game mode like this would keep me paying would keep me playing even if I'm not always winning matches. And I feel like a mode like this would be really interesting too for a point that you make a lot, Dills, where like the more you get me playing with cards, the mm. more likely I am to buy packs to, to fill money. them out in my main collection. Yeah. I actually, so, I think we've talked about something similar to this in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Not maybe this fleshed out or in the, the comparison to, to Diablo 3, which I really like. I actually think what would be cool is if, let's say you, you could like have a season start, you pick a class, and then you get packs that are like hunter packs, right? Where mm -hmm. there's more likely to be specific hunter cards and things like that. And, you know, again, yeah, you can't spend any real money. It's just literally like a race to a collection and see how high you can climb uh, with this like free to play collection. There's a lot of cool things you could do with this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I felt this a little bit when I did the rank 50 new account thing, mm -hmm. but not to this level. Yeah, it's very similar. And the thing that I really liked about this idea was not just like basically a ladder built around win rate, but the idea of, you know, who's done the most hero damage, who's killed the most minions, like having a 
different ladders for all of these different like sure. feats in Hearthstone. So you could start to like build a deck that was fun for you that maybe wasn't necessarily designed around winning necessarily, but was just like, okay, in each game I go into, I want to kill an average of, you know, 20 minions. Mm. And that's, that's my win condition. So then sure. again, like I'm really interested in any ideas or game modes or tavern brawls that make you think about Hearthstone in a different way that isn't just how can I kill my opponent? Like finding, it's why I like puzzle mode so much. It's yeah. like, you're trying to find the way to win that isn't necessarily Hearthstone's traditional win condition, which is, you know, kill the other person. Deal 30 damage, yeah. Deal 30 the, uh, damage, or 60 or 100 or, or whatever. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you could even have uh, like a, a achievements that are worth an amount of points. And then as you rack up those achievements, it's like that's where your leaderboard is. It's like who has the yeah. most achievement points and not who has the most Yeah, so then it could be yeah. even something like, okay, so say my rank on the leaderboard for most minions killed is uh, 8,000. And yeah. then I rank up and I get to 7,000. Well, when you get to 7,000, you get 10 more packs to open or sure. something. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, it could be very cool. Yeah, to help, again, not with your main Hearthstone, like competitive collection, but in your seasonal Hearthstone collection. Yeah. I think this could be really, really cool. So for people who think this sounds fun, but it doesn't exist in the game yet. I do recommend go make a new account and do that rank 50 thing and just mm -hmm. try not to spend any money. Because I did, I went from rank 50 to 25, spending $0, just opening the packs that they gave me, uh, disenchanting stuff to make a deck and everything. And it was, I, I, I found it to be a pretty fun experience. Um, there were moments I felt bad because there were clearly like actual <laughs> new players that I was crushing, but you know. And you and your knowledge were murdering them. <laughs> yeah, but that's, it's fine. It was, it was enjoyable. <laughs> uh, so yeah, definitely uh, that's a cool idea. I hope that they, they look into that. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love stuff like this. I love people theory crafting new ideas and, and presenting them to us because. Uh, well, and it's kind of cool too that it comes from another Blizzard property, right? Sure. So it's. It's something Some that crossover. you know they'd be familiar with at the company. It's not an idea that's totally out of left field. It might be something they've already thought of. So yeah, <laughs> get on it, Blizzard. Hell yeah, Blizzard, right? let's go. Uh, <laughs> all right. By the way, that is the end of episode two ninety nine, which means we are creeping closer and closer to episode three hundred, which will be happening on Thursday, like we said earlier. Yep. Uh, special date, special time, seven p.m. Eastern time. It'll be on Twitch.tv slash A Move TV. Or is it slash a move? I don't know. A move TV. <laughs> okay, a move TV. Good. <laughs> I got it right the first time. Uh, so yeah, please come and join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Garrett will be back, so we'll have the all three of us here. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a really really fun show. So please come on by and join us. But that's gonna do it for this show. Again, before we go, let's thank our patrons one more time. Patreon.com/slash tac is where you can go to support this show, uh, just directly support this show and help us continue to do this for another 300 episodes after that. Tax 600, coming soon. Uh, also, if you don't want to do that because you can't afford it or if you just want to support us in another way, uh, five-star reviews on iTunes also help a lot because it helps people find this show and get new listeners. I want to thank our Patreon producers, Declan H. and Sean C. If you want some tack coffee mugs and glasses, you can do that at etched.amove.tv. And also you can get t-shirts uh, for sale at shirts.amove.tv. The entire back catalog of The Angry Chicken can be found at amove.tv and of course youtube.com slash amovetv. And follow the show on Twitter. We are at Tech Podcast. The show is generally going to be on Tuesday nights, 4 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash amovetv. You can always catch the live show there or uh, you can also do it on alphageekmedia.com. Big thanks to Brian Griffith Music for our music. And... Uh, <laughs> That's a lot. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Jocelyn, <laughs> tell people, yes, you, you talk for a while. Tell people where, where people can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. That's J-O-C-E Plays. If you have any interest at all in high-end World of Warcraft, I do suggest you follow me over on Twitch because I stream on Tuesdays and Sundays, and we are raiding Heroic Battle of Dizarralor, which is the uh, raid content that came out last week. So our team's doing really good. We're seven of nine on normal and two of nine on heroic. So yeah, do come and uh, follow the follow the show, follow the stream. Sweet. Uh, you yep. can find Garrett. He's at Garrett Art on Twitter. Uh, NoMoonArt.com is where you can find his stream designs. Into the Nexus is the Heroes of the Storm podcast he does. And of course, he also does a solo show, Angry Nerd amove.tv slash angry nerd and you can find me on twitter i'm at willie dills you can check out my stream twitch.tv slash willie dills you can also check out my wrestling podcast one nine hundred wrestling you can find it anywhere where fine podcasts are are uh, available 
You know, actually, there's a <clears throat> there's a thing that we're not doing on on the angry chicken. I got to talk to you afterwards. We, we we need to spread our wings even more. Well, okay. I know chickens don't generally spread their wings, but yeah. Well, they fly. They they, they at least can, flutter. They can hop. <laughs> Yeah. And flap. <laughs> the good old hop and flutter. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for episode uh, 299. We'll see y'all for episode 300 soon. But until then, job's done. Job's done. Yes. <laughs>